بسم الله والحمد لله والصلوات والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن ولا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear brothers and sisters and colleagues all over the world such an honor to have you all with us welcome to I think this is our second this is our third uh, lecture and session as part of ISIP's uh, Ramadan lecture series. Last week, we had an amazing lecture with uh, one of the co-founders of ISIP, uh, Sister uh, Ustada Fatima Ahmed. She's actually here with us today, facilitating, and also Ustada Sana Nurein, uh, with regards to uh, contemplation and tafakkur, and relationship with Quran. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And before that, we had a beautiful lecture with Ustada Maryam Sinclair with regards to which type of wisdoms we can take from the story of uh, Prophet Musa السلم, and his struggles uh, towards Firaun as a way to relate to the current struggles that a lot of brothers and sisters all over the world are facing when it comes to fighting tyranny and, uh, uh, and, and for justice. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy to all of our Palestinian brothers and sisters and all people that are being uh, subjected to oppression, occupation all over the world. I mean, besides that, ISIP has had a lot of other Ramadan in initiatives. Uh, our Terbiyah Task Force has done a Ramadan series where they, every week on Fridays, they share a clip uh, with regards to different themes and topics related to Terbiyah. Uh, which has been very beneficial. Uh, ISAP's Shifa Institute as well uh, is conducting a Ramadan lecture series with different topics and themes and lectures related to health and healing and well-being from an Islamic holistic paradigm. And this are con these lectures are conducted in Swedish, Norwegian, and Danish. And we have had other in initiatives as well during the holy month of Ramadan. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of your siyam and your qiyam and your sadaqah and good deeds, dear participants and beloved brothers and sisters. And thank you so much for giving out your precious time. We're very honored to be with y'all. Also, some of you have given us some guidance in the SIA that we have had some issues in sending out the Zoom links to all of you who register to ISIP's different initiatives through the Google registration form. We want to ask for apologies for that, dear brothers and sisters. We believe that Google is putting some more safety and security measurements when it comes to sending out mass emails. So a lot of the emails that we send out with the links to our sessions tend to uh, tend to either not be received by you guys or maybe you'll find them in your junk mail or in your spam box. So if you go to your spam box, you can always actually uh, mark uh, the emails that you guys receive from ISAP as emails that are not junk. And then hopefully they will be received in your main mailbox. Nevertheless, me and my colleagues, we will try to check and see if we can find another way to send out links moving forward. And maybe we should use other tools instead of Gmail or the Google functions. More information about that will be shared in all of our social media platforms to people that are registered to our newsletter, but also in our social media uh, channels and WhatsApp groups, inshallah. But we will want to ask for forgiveness already now. This is uh, beyond our, uh, you know, uh, measurements and beyond what we can do, but we will try to our best to find a solution, inshallah. All right, let's start by speaking about today's lecture, inshallah. Today's lecture will be about the impact of Ramadan in our homes, creating a balanced lifestyle with Dr. Ildus Rafikov uh, from Turkey and Russia. Uh, Dr. Ildus is a, very, is a very close colleague of ours, and we're very honored to host him today. We had the honor to host him actually a couple of uh, days ago when ICP established its Russian-speaking chapter, and Dr. Indus was one of our guest speakers and keynote speakers, and we have a very close partnership with Dr. Indus through the Maqasid Institute, which is Dr. Indus' organization, and the Maqasid Institute together with ISIP and our research center, which is the Ad Balkhi Institute of Islamic Psychological Studies and Research. We're establishing something called the IPRN, which is the Islamic Psychology Research Network, and if you guys are interested in doing research within the field of Islamic psychology, feel free to reach out to us and join the IPRN, inshallah. Within a month or two months, we're going to start an IPRN lecture series uh, where Dr. Indus will be one of our lecturers as well, inshallah. So we're very honored to host Dr. Indus. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today's agenda, dear brothers and sisters and excellent colleagues, we will start by reciting Surat al-Fatiha. We will go through some welcome guidelines and then we will 
invite Dr. Indus to do his lecture. And after the lecture, we will have some time for some Q&As as well, inshallah. So let's let's start by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Rahman ar-Rahim. Malikim al-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdana sirata nasta'in. Sirata ladina alamta alayhim. Bayla al-Mahdubi alayhim. Wala da'alin. Barakallahu feekum, brothers and sisters. So just a little bit about the Zoom etiquette. So if you guys can have your cameras on, it's always nice to see each other and to connect with you know all of your brothers and sisters from all over the world. ISIP is an international international movement. So we have members from all over the world. We are you know very pleased to see the beautiful diversity that we have. So and if you want to see everybody, feel free to use the gallery view as well, which is a function that Zoom and uh, you know Zoom. Uh, has uh, for you to utilize and offers. No recording or screenshots are allowed, dear brothers and sisters. We will share the recording on ISIP's YouTube channel within a couple of days. And with the permission of Dr. Idus, we, we will also share his slides to all of those who registered for our session, inshallah. Keep muted at all times. In the Q&As, we might open up for uh, unmuting yourself. But if you have any questions or reflections, feel free to utilize the Zoom chat throughout the session, inshallah. Rename yourself, as I mentioned before. Add your name and the country of origin. It's always interesting to see how many countries we represent. And you can always utilize the chat options. And my colleagues will also share some uh, share, uh, beneficial resources for all of you in the Zoom chat throughout the session as well. And if you need any live transcriptions, please press the more button in the Zoom application and request it. And we will be more than happy to, uh, to allow you to utilize that, inshallah. A little bit about ISIP, the International Students of Islamic Psychology. We try to be an inclusive space designed to connect people with diverse backgrounds interested in the field of Islamic psychology. We aim to disseminate knowledge, share resources, and discuss best practices in a free and accessible manner. So everything we do in ISAP is free of charge, dear brothers and sisters. So no matter which social, economic, or background you have, you can benefit from the sacred knowledge of Islamic psychology and Islamic thought generally as well. We also want to be a platform to enable further development of people's personal and professional interest, studies, and understanding of Islamic psychology within their community communities and countries of origin. So within ISIP right now, we have over 30 local and regional chapters all over the world. Uh, we do lectures in over 10 different languages. And um, we try to also uh, fill the void and fill the gaps in the local communities through our local and regional chapters. As I mentioned, we just established our Russian speaking chapter. And if you guys want to join any of our local and regional chapters, feel free to reach out to us and we will be more than happy to add you to our local chapters. We also have over 80 task forces working with different objectives, all everything from Islamic psychology counseling, Tadabiya task force, neurodiversity task force, trauma healing tracks, uh, Islamic psychology supervision groups, Islamic medicine groups, uh, research groups, uh, curriculum development groups, etc. And if you want to join, feel free to join, inshallah. We will share all the resources in the Zoom chat. Also, if you if we do not have any local chapter in the country that you are residing in, feel free to reach out to us. We will be happy to establish a chapter under your excellent leadership, inshallah. So ways to participate is to subscribe to ISAP's YouTube channel. We will share the link in the Zoom chat. You can also join our Islamic psychology WhatsApp groups for resource sharing and discussions. And those links will be also shared in the Zoom chat. And you can also become a member of ISAP via our website at www.isap.foundation, where you can get access to our digital library with over 1,000 resources related to Islamic psychology and Muslim mental health free of charge. And becoming a member of ISAP is also free of charge, inshallah. So, uh, oh, sorry. I think that uh, you guys, uh, I, I lost my slide. Do you guys see my slide still? I hope so. So this is just uh, also the uh, the QR code for our WhatsApp groups. I also want to thank my colleagues, Sister Nadira, Sister Tri, and Sister Fatima for hosting and conducting this session today. Jazakallah khairan for your excellent work, your colleagues. So let's now move on to introduce our main speaker for today, Dr. Ildus Rafiko. Dr. Ildus is the Deputy Executive Director at Maqasid Institute. He holds a PhD from ISTAC and IAUM in Malaysia in philosophy, ethics, and contemporary issues with special interest in philosophy, Islamic economics, banking, and finance, and he has a bachelor's degree in communication from the International Islamic University of Malaysia as well. He also holds a chartered professional certificate in Islamic banking and finance from the International Center of Education and Islamic Finance, INCEIF, Kuala Lumpur. 
Dr. Endos has published academic articles on econom economic methodology, specula speculation, scarcity, sustainability, financial crisis, banking and finances, and reform in education from a historical and contemporary perspectives. He has developed interest in philosophy and the Maqasid studies with application to contemporary issues. Currently, Dr. Indus is the Deputy Executive Director and the Director of Research at Maqasid Institute Global. Also, he was the Founding Managing Director of IKI Academy, where he is currently teaching methodology of research, Islamic epistemology, Islamic economics and finance in both English and Russian language. And as I mentioned earlier, we are also very honored to establish the IPRN, the Islamic Psychology Research Network, with the Maghassid Institute. Uh, and we hope that this will be a benefit when it comes to doing more research within the field of Islamic psychology. All right, dear brothers and sisters, we would like to have your feedback as well. So feel free to use this QR code if you want to give feedback to us. We will also share the link in the Zoom chat. Thank you so much for attending. And please forgive us already now for any shortcomings. Make dua for us. And please fill out the short feedback uh, form, as I mentioned. So without any further ado, uh, I will now stop sharing my screen. And uh, Dr. Indus, feel free to take over. The floor is yours. Most welcome. اوكي في اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن تبعه باحسان الى يوم الدين ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي الحمد لله فيرست اوف اول وي اي ثانك ذا اورجنايزرز براذر جمال الدين اند سيستر فاطمه اند اول ذا اورجنايزرز ات اي سي Uh, it is uh, it is an honor for me to be uh, invited to uh, this to speak at this event. Uh, of course, there are people uh, probably more worthy uh, to be speaking on this uh, on this kind of topic. Uh, but here I am. I'll just uh, share some of my uh, ideas. Uh, what does it mean to uh, to have a balanced life uh, uh, lifestyle and how Ram uh, Ramadan uh, affects uh, affects our homes and uh, in Uh, in uh, in in various dimensions like uh, health, spiritual, economic, and health dimensions. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, Brother Jamal he uh, introduced me, and I'm uh, uh, I'm originally uh, from Bashkortostan, uh, which is one of the republics in uh, in the Russian Federation right now. Uh, it's uh, to the west of the Ural Mountains. If somebody wants to just uh, take a look at the geography. Uh, so, but I left my uh, home country many years ago, and in fact, it's uh, uh, going to be 30, uh, it's 29 years uh, this year. Uh, but from the time I uh, started practicing Islam, it's uh, this year is 30 years. And uh, this is my uh, 30th uh, Ramadan, I think. And uh, uh, subhanAllah, uh, I, I remember that when I just started uh, practicing uh, Islam, uh, I remember uh, some of my uh, family members, they said, oh, this is just a fad. Uh, <clears throat> this is just, uh, uh, you know, temporary, uh, like, a, like a fashion. You know, everybody wants to, uh, at that time in the 1990s, middle of 90s, they wanted to get into some some. Uh, religious uh, movements, and I was uh, just drawn into uh, the Islamic uh, movement. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, this is uh, 30 years. I, uh, I st I'm still uh, there, and hope I do hope that it's going to continue until the uh, day that I die on this on this path, inshallah. And this path has been uh, the path of uh, learning, uh, the path of uh, seeing many interesting. Uh, personalities and people and scholars uh, while living in Malaysia and now in, in Turkey. And in Malaysia, I spent the uh, most of my adult years. Uh, it's uh, It has been more than a uh, quarter century that I, uh, I lived in Malaysia. Uh, uh, I completed all my uh, all my higher education in, uh, in there, including the PhD. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, uh, I met very uh, interesting, uh, interesting people along uh, along the way, and uh, I did learn a lot. And of course, I am uh, just a learner of uh, some of the things that you are going to hear from me. 
uh, and this is just a, a sharing a sharing session. It's not a, it's not a lecture. Uh, if at any time, if you uh, feel that I did not uh, add, uh, that I, I could have added uh, something, uh, just share it in the uh, in the comment uh, in the comment session. Uh, maybe for other uh, for other lectures for other purposes, I could uh, add uh, your points as well. Uh, so the uh, the topic is uh, impact of Ramadan in our homes. And I'm going to be looking at it from the uh, three dimensions. Uh, so three perspectives, spiritual, uh, economic, and uh, health perspective. And in, in terms of health, it is, of course, uh, there is a physical and uh, psychological health as well. Uh, we see that the uh, majority of people uh, on Earth today, they live in, in fast-paced uh, urban societies. Uh, this is unlike anything that humanity has uh, ever witnessed or experienced. And uh, large cities provide great opportunity to, to earn a living, uh, but they uh, also they take away uh, much more than they give in return. Uh, uh, countries with highest uh, GDP are characterized with uh, higher rates of anxiety and depression. And uh, life gets so hard that people hardly get time to relax uh, properly, connect with Allah, uh, contemplate, uh, read, and seek guidance uh, from the uh, from the, from the revelation, and so uh, Ramadan, uh, Ramadan really is a uh, blessing, uh, which we have have to seize as much as possible to reconnect with the uh, with the Book of Allah, uh, with the Creator, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and uh, also with uh, with our own uh, family and with the community and with uh, brothers and sisters that we. Uh, that we work with or we are connected with in different uh, in different networks and so uh, what i'm going to uh, going to present is uh, mostly uh, i will let the quran speak and just uh, with very minimal uh, maybe my own uh, explanation of some of the uh, some of the ayats that i see uh, but i will let the quran speak because it is really this month is the month of the uh, quran and uh, this is the month that we are supposed to uh, read uh, and we reconnect with the Book of Allah. Uh, we uh, we read, uh, try to read uh, uh, as much as possible. Some people do uh, khatam, some people do even double khatam, and some people do even more. Uh, but we try to reconnect with uh, with the Book of uh, with the Book of Allah, and. Uh, and uh, this actually gives us the opportunity to. Uh, not only reconnect, but also uh, reflect on what we are uh, reading. And so the exercise today is just a, a kind of an, a reflection exercise. And uh, so uh, I want to start with uh, this uh, uh, with this uh, quote uh, from Surah, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, uh, Ayah 143. Uh, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس ويكون الرسول عليكم شهيدا uh, and thus we have willed you to be a community of the middle way uh, so that uh, with your lives you might, you might bear witness to the truth before all mankind and that the uh, رسول الله might bear uh, witness to it before you and I, I want you to remember this uh, quote until they uh, maybe have it uh, with you just uh, uh, remember it until the end of this uh, of, of this presentation and uh, what I'm going to uh, also state in the very last part is going to be related to uh, to uh, this I as well uh, and so this is the translation of uh, Muhammad Tassad. and in his uh, translation he has this note uh, uh, the note on the, uh, for the specific ayah. And he states that the middlemost community is a community that keeps an equitable balance between extremes and is realistic, realistic in its appreciation of man's nature and possibilities, reje rejecting both uh, licentiousness and exaggerated asceticism. Uh, so it is uh, the, a deen uh, which is uh, realistic uh, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, uh, uh, he promoted this uh, or brought this thing uh, as, a, as a holistic uh, way of life. 
and uh, he uh, uh, he discouraged any any kind of uh, ex extreme uh, 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 extreme ideas about an uh, extreme um, uh, practice in in the religion. Uh, and so this is the uh, uh, this is the middlemost uh, what uh, Ummatan uh, was about. Uh, middlemost community and so this is a balanced uh, balanced community uh, and uh, in in a number of uh, uh, of ayats we see the um, uh, we see the concept of uh, balance al mizan uh, and al mizan is uh, something that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this uh, this universe with uh, it it is uh, it is so much balanced that uh, even uh, even an atom's weight, uh, weight, uh, let's say, even uh, in or maybe a, a thousand uh, of, of an atom's weight, uh, if, if there is, if there was any, uh, 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 how to say, uh, in the initial beginning of the universe, uh, if there was any any problem with uh, even slight, uh, 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 how, how to say? Even uh, slightly, if the one uh, few atoms would be different than uh, than it was, then the uh, the universe couldn't be uh, couldn't have been created. And so Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in His infinite wisdom, uh, of course, it creates uh, in uh, in in the best uh, in the best shape, in the best in the best manner. And uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala creates uh, created us uh, for uh, for the purpose, and the purpose is. Uh, uh, that we uh, worship him and nothing nothing else no one else uh, 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 and so the the balanced uh, balanced lifestyle what would we uh, what do we mean generally uh, it is something uh, it, it is a, a life that take uh, takes care of the whole being uh, including the including the body uh, mind and soul and uh, we see that uh, there is uh, there is a problem in the in the Anthropocene today, or in the modern uh, modern sciences, modern technologies. Uh, that they, even though we uh, we do peruse them, we do use them uh, as as much as uh, we can, and it is uh, very much uh, beneficial. Uh, but also there is uh, there is one thing uh, that the uh, the modern uh, the modern civilization does is uh, uh, every time that we want to, uh, the uh, humanity wants to find a solution, we add uh, layers upon layers of uh, new uh, new things. New uh, we create uh, additional uh, additional problems. Uh, whereas uh, the uh, uh, the uh, simple uh, kind of simple life uh, in uh, in villages in uh, maybe in in on the sultans uh, people in uh, in rural areas uh, tend to be uh, more uh, simple and very uh, warm uh, warm and welcome uh, and uh, very hospitable uh, uh, compared compared to them uh, even the uh, the health uh, in terms of physical emotional and um, uh, and psychological health, I would uh, say that in in some uh, in some places, uh, people are more uh, uh, happier in in the simple simple conditions. And so, balance uh, balanced life today in in the urban uh, in urban situation that we live in today, uh, we need to find that balance of uh, uh, the balance that in in certain uh in in these jurisdictions in this uh in rural areas people tend to have it naturally and so uh fasting in uh, ramadan uh, it has uh, spiritual social physical and psychological uh, dimensions that we will uh, talk about in a bit and uh, so it's not only uh abstaining from uh, food and water but then uh, it's also abstaining from uh, anything uh, that that will lead to uh, annulment of of your fast, uh, it will. Uh, uh, it, it is also something that we uh, uh, brings us uh, back to our nature, to our uh, fitra, and that fitra is uh, uh, is kindness, uh, is charity, uh, even though in our daily lives, in our uh, fast paced societies. Uh, when uh, we kind of forget uh, quite often who we forget 
that we are connected with uh, with everyone else. With we are connected with uh, other people, connected with the uh, nature around us, uh, connected with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and uh, all of these interconnections they uh, they have an influence on us, on our mind, on our, our hearts. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, Ramadan is, uh, is a month that uh, uh, brings us back to the to that fitra. Uh, because really, when when we uh, abstain from uh, food and drink and we uh, control ourselves, because really fasting requires uh, self control and discipline, uh, it, uh, uh, it it we kind of uh, get uh, more grounded. Uh, we uh, we tend to be uh, more down to earth. We uh, tend to be more uh, patient with other people than than in other times. Uh, and self control and discipline uh, of, of course uh, uh, also if you if you have ever done uh, sports uh, uh, even if it is not professional uh, if you did sports and you went uh, all the way to uh, let's say to uh, uh, to take uh, participate in uh, tournaments or in championships uh, championships uh, you know that even uh, it requires a lot of uh, a lot of patience self control uh, discipline you know in order to get to a certain level uh, certain level in sports uh, and also in many other areas uh, that people will start noticing you and uh, maybe invite you for uh, uh, let's say to participate in tournaments for example if it is in sports uh, and so the fasting as well uh, it requires uh, self control and and discipline and because uh, 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 really, if it if it is not only uh, if you don't have this uh, uh, taqwa and and discipline, uh, then you just uh, discard it and say, why do I have to do that? Why do I have to suffer uh, throughout the day and uh, not 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 drink and eat? Uh, and so it it is also a shared experience of fasting, uh, and it does create a sense of uh, unity and solidarity. And uh, I really appreciate that uh, uh, you know this kind of uh, uh, net network me meetings uh, with ICIP, with uh, other uh, uh, with other organizations. Uh, it really creates a sense of uh, unity, and uh, not only uh, 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 within the family, but also with com uh, community. Let's say in your own mahalla, or uh, and also uh, this sense of community, as a sense of unity. In uh, in a, a greater a kind of greater international community, and all of us we sit in uh, in uh, in different parts of the world, uh, probably from uh, from Southeast Asia all the way in, uh, I don't know maybe to North America, uh, and uh, and uh, and so all of us are united here in uh, in this one uh, shared experience. We are uh, fasting. We are. Uh, we uh, we reestablish the uh, this link with the with the Quran, and so uh, also fasting cultivates empathy and uh, compassion towards the less fortunate. Uh, so we uh, more or less we understand what uh, what it means uh, to have uh, to be to uh, go for uh, let's say eighteen fourteen uh, eighteen hours without without food. And drink, uh, and at least we can empathize with uh, people who don't have that. And but this is where we, uh, uh, as a result of that empathy, uh, we also pra uh, practice uh, charity. And Ramadan, of course, is the month of uh, reassessment of one's goals, and it is, uh, I would say, it is like a madrasa that we enter every year. We enter this madrasa. Uh, we know, we understand, we had this uh, whole year and. Uh, probably we uh, had some uh, problems and uh, and uh, lacking in terms of uh, maybe sawm or uh, sayyab and uh, maybe uh, reading the Quran. But we want to uh, renew this and reassess our own uh, our own selves and uh, also renew our own uh, personal qibla uh, towards the spirituality and greater balance. Of course, we. Uh, all of us, we have the Qibla, which is the uh, Mecca, the Masjid al-Haram in Mecca. Uh, but the uh, Qibla, the Qibla of the heart is the, uh, is that, uh, uh, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to get uh, closer to our creator and we want to understand his, uh, his message. 
and uh, uh, and this way uh, through uh, spirituality uh, we get uh, we get to practice uh, balance we uh, kind of uh, balance ourselves uh, balance ourselves in uh, with our spiritually and also uh, physically and emotionally and so fasting does promote uh, health, uh, physical, psychological, and, uh, and, and emotional. So uh, let us discuss the spiritual dimension uh, of uh, Ramadan. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, ayah from uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah 183. Uh, so the purpose uh, here, I want to just underline the uh, last uh, portion of it, so that we uh, attain, so that we attain uh, taqwa or God consciousness, Allah consciousness. Uh, but what is uh, what is taqwa? Uh, and the, the definition. Uh, that definition of taqwa we can find in uh, in another verse, uh, actually in, in many other ayats. Uh, but one of the uh, uh, one of the ayats which uh, really gives a proper definition of what is uh, taqwa, and it is related to uh, al-bir or to goodness or righteousness. Uh, it is also in Surah Al-Baqarah, the ayah 177, uh, where uh, Allah uh, says, "Lay al-bir wa al-bir man billah." Uh, and until the uh, until the end of the ayah, uh, so the English translation would be: Righteousness is not uh, in turning your faces towards the east or the west. Uh, rather, uh, righteousness uh, are, are those who believe in Allah, the last day, uh, the angels, the books, the prophets, uh, who give uh, charity of, out of their uh, cherished uh, wealth to relatives, orphans, uh, the poor, the needy, the travelers, the beggars, and for freeing captives who establish prayer, uh, pay uh, zakah, and keep the pledges that they make, and who are patient in times of uh, suffering, adversity, and in the heat of battle. Uh, it is they who are true in faith, and it is they who are mindful, or these are the people who are al-muttaqun. Uh, so if you read these two ayats uh, about the uh, about Saum, and also uh, this one is about al-birr, al uh, if you connect these two with each other, you'll see that fasting, uh, the fasting at, uh, helps attain uh, taqwa, uh, but not by the virtue of fasting alone. Uh, it must be connected with uh, with the firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the uh, belief in the last day, the angels, the books, the prophets, uh, but also uh, it needs to be connected with the acts of charity towards relatives, orphans, uh, the poor, the needy, uh, travelers, beggar, beggars, uh, and for freeing captives, but it's not all. Uh, one must uh, establish uh, the prayer, uh, pay zakat, uh, fulfill agreements, and be patient in times of suffering and uh, and adversity. And so, uh, and this will also include the uh, being patient with uh, with suffering from thirst and and hunger during uh, during fasting. And so. Uh, Psalm in Ramadan is not simply keeping away from uh, food and water, but more than, uh, but more than that, it is about uh, strengthening one's uh, iman, uh, correcting one's actions by giving in charity and doing good. And uh, we know that the Prophet وسلم, he uh, used to uh, spend even more and give even more in charity and pray even uh, even more and uh, do all kinds of uh, uh, good uh, good acts uh, during that uh, uh, during that month. And so he is for us uh, Uswatun Hasana. Uh, he is the good, uh, good example uh, for us. Uh, another point I want to make in discussing uh, spiritual dimension is the uh, ayah uh, 185 of Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, which states that uh, Ramadan is the month in which uh, the Quran was revealed as a guide for humanity, with clear proofs of guidance and the starter uh, and the standard to distinguish between right and wrong. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقات. And so the revelation started with the first uh, five ayats of uh, Surah Al-Alaq. Uh, 
uh, the uh, were uh, inviting uh, inviting the prophet to read in the name of his lord uh, like uh, and so uh, this book is uh, is a guidance to humanity which includes uh, individuals and and households and allah states that he presented to people every kind of uh, examples like uh, for example in surah uh, surah zumar in uh, ayah 37 uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, says uh, 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 and so we have given in this Quran, we have given all kinds of uh, uh, stories uh, that uh, and made them clear to you so that uh, so that uh, they can uh, so that they would uh, think uh, and and remember. And, and also the same uh, uh, same kind of verse uh, or ayah was revealed in uh, Surah Rum, uh, and uh, also in Surah Al Isra in uh, in ayah number twelve, Allah says, "Wakulla uh, shayin fassalnahu tafsila," and uh, everything we have set out in detail. So in this uh, in this Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, uh, opens up everything uh, to us in in detail and. Uh, and capitalness, and it is uh, uh, it is kind of uh, uh, sufficient for us to seek guidance from uh, from the book. And the bayina uh, bayinat here refers to clear proofs, which are either in the form of uh, the Quran itself, uh, or the ayats in the universe, or within uh, within ourselves. And so, um, Allah mentions in uh, Surah Fussilat in Ayah fifty three. Uh, when he mentioned Sanurihim ayatin fil afaq wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al-haq and so there are proofs uh, in in the book of Allah and also in uh, kitab al-kawn uh, or the book of uh, nature and also uh, within uh, within our own selves uh, and in this in this regard uh, even uh, you know if you start uh, uh, studying, uh, let's say, biology, and uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it's amazing how uh, even the single cell is uh, how uh, complex it is, and uh, uh, subhanallah, it is just uh, uh, something really uh, amazing, and uh, it makes one thing if you really contemplate uh, even about one cell as an ayah, uh, really uh, it points uh, it points to the uh, to the creator. The complexity, the sheer complexity of uh, of this one single uh, cell that <clears throat> that, and there are trillions of cells that uh, that we are uh, that we consist of. Uh, lastly, in the point in this point about spiritual dimension, uh, Allah says in uh, Surah Al Baqarah in uh, in uh, Ayah one hundred eighty six. Uh, so this is already after explaining uh, about Saum. Uh, he says, "Wa salaka ibadi anni fa inni qari ujibu da'wat al-da'i ida da'an fa liyastajibu li wa liyuminu bi la'allahum yarshudun." So, uh, all my servants, when my servants ask you, a prophet, about me, I am truly near. I respond to one's prayer when they call upon me. Uh, so let them respond with obedience to me and believe in me. Perhaps they will be guided uh, to the right way. Uh, so the emphasis here is on uh, dua and the belief in Allah for the purpose of attaining uh, more guidance on the on the right path. And so uh, the uh, uh, month of Ramadan, if it is practiced uh, properly, uh, it has huge benefits for those who fast in terms of uh, spirituality and uh, the practice of charity and uh, prayers. And doing good deeds and keeping good relations with uh, with relatives and and neighbors. Uh, so we can uh, we can state that based on these and many other ayats and the hadith, the function of Ramadan is to attain uh, taqwa or the Allah consciousness and the goodness uh, through not only fasting and, and abstaining from uh, from food and water, uh, but uh, more than that, it by engaging in uh, charitable uh, deeds and uh, in additional spiritual practice of uh, prayers and uh, supplications, uh, so that one might uh, attend, attain uh, rushd, uh, rushd or greater awareness of Allah. Uh, uh, rushd is actually synonymous with uh, taqwa, but more related to correct, uh, correct rationality, reason, and, uh, and awareness. Uh, and so, um, 
Uh, the second dimension here is the uh, economic uh, dimension. Uh, and so, uh, uh, in, uh, for example, in Surah al, uh, Surah al Araf, in uh, Ayah 31, uh, yeah, uh, it says, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Ya uh, Bani Adam, khudu zina takum inda kulli masjid, wa kulu wa shabu wa la tusrifu, innahu la yuhibbu al-musrifin. O oh, children of Adam, uh, take your adornment, uh, like wear your clothing at every masjid, and eat and drink and be not uh, excessive. Uh, indeed, he likes not those who commit excess. And so the economic dimension, uh, when uh, when we uh, abstain from uh, from uh, Israel, uh, you know, it's not general, it's not only for the Ramadan, of course, but uh, it is uh, generally. That we should be abstaining uh, from uh, from israf or from the excess uh, excessive consumption. Uh, but uh, uh, during Ramadan, when we increase uh, the charity, when we uh, when we reduce our consumption, uh, uh, even I remember also myself during uh, uh, during my days at uh, at the university. Uh, Ramadan would be one uh, one time in a year that I could uh, at least save a little bit uh, for myself out of uh, out of the uh, you know scholarship that I used to uh, used to receive, and so uh, and of course at the uh, International Islamic University at that time it was uh, uh, really you could just participate in uh, you go and you can have uh, have uh, iftars uh, and. This way, uh, really, uh, there is an economic dimension in terms of uh, saving uh, for specifically for students, uh, students studying at uh, at the universities, uh, and if, uh, uh, at least you can attend, uh, you can uh, visit some masajid, and uh, maybe uh, you know, some other other people could invite uh, you to do uh, uh, could invite you for iftar. So it's one, just one uh, small part. Specifically, I think it's uh, uh, good for uh, for students uh, and also for those who are not so well off. Uh, so and and people generally increase in charity. Uh, we uh, give uh, more than uh, than usual. Uh, so uh, sadaqa is something that uh, people do practice more uh, uh, during Ramadan uh, than during others. And uh, uh, this uh, this is actually shows significance of uh, not for profit motive of transactions during Ramadan. So, uh, so we are uh, uh, human beings. We are transacting. We are interacting with people on daily basis, and many of our transactions are kind of uh, uh, like for profit uh, for profit uh, motive. I mean, we have uh, these motives in uh, in our business lives, for example. And, uh, but during Ramadan, uh, this for-profit motive uh, kind of uh, uh, fades away a little bit, uh, even though, uh, I mean, you're still uh, probably working. And uh, if you are selling uh, things, you're still uh, interested to get, uh, to get profit. Uh, profit. Uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, you, are, uh, you, uh, you practice uh, charity, you give sadaqa. Uh, you also uh, you may give uh, zakah, and uh, also all of this is uh, kind of uh, under the umbrella of nafaka uh, infaq, uh, which uh, actually uh, uh, can uh, kind of covers uh, the uh, sadaqat and uh, and zakah and so on. So, uh, and in the Quran we see uh, many ayats that mention. Uh, 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 nafaka. I mean, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, in terms of uh, uh, spending, uh, it can be spending on the way of Allah, uh, spending for family, uh, spending for uh, for other people in the community. Uh, also, uh, no overconsumption. Uh, uh, Ramadan is not about food, uh, even though uh, I. Uh, uh, some people may uh, say that uh, you know it uh, culturally uh, it is about uh, uh, some uh, some foods that uh, usually during the year you don't uh, uh, some cultures they don't uh, they don't eat but then uh, during Ramadan it's uh, uh, it is like a, a feast and fit, uh, uh, iftar is like a, is like a feast. Uh, so uh, Ramadan is not uh, is not uh, for uh, feasting. It is uh, 
it's not about consumption of food. Uh, it is about uh, uh, really grounding yourself more, uh, controlling yourself, uh, controlling your emotions, uh, disciplining yourself, and uh, uh, and uh, also and uh, uh, practice practice of empathy with uh, with people around uh, because there are millions and millions of people who are uh, who don't have what we have. And uh, especially uh, people in conflict zones and uh, uh, in in the land of Palestine, in in other uh, other uh, uh, other places around the world, uh, we have uh, uh, thousands and upon thousands of people and millions of people around the world who are who do not have uh, that maybe don't have enough food for uh, for iftar. And if you uh, if you are able to uh, spend uh, even a little bit. Uh, on, uh, let's say, there are many uh, uh, many organizations today that uh, that provide uh, iftars, and, and uh, you know, please do uh, support this kind of, this kind of uh, charity organizations uh, that uh, uh, really provide uh, provide iftars to people who uh, who are struggling. And uh, so uh, Ramadan is not about overconsumption, uh, about overspending. It's not about the waste. Uh, unfortunately, while I was living in Malaysia, I remember that uh, every month uh, in in newspapers they will they will talk about uh, the waste, how much uh, how much waste uh, that waste has increased in uh, let's say uh, because uh, uh, people will, would go for iftar in uh, in restaurants in, uh, in in cafes. And uh, many a time, people just uh, buy too much, uh, bring too much, and uh, and uh, and they waste. I mean, they they don't uh, finish. Uh, they don't finish their food. And every time, uh, every year, thousands and thousands of tons of uh, still good uh, good food is being wasted. Uh, so uh, Ramadan is not about food. Uh, please, uh, you know, you can. Uh, we should be uh, mindful of uh, consumption. What we consume uh, in what in what portions, and uh, and so that we don't overspend. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we can uh, maybe once if you uh, if you go uh, for iftar in some uh, restaurant, maybe nice restaurant, it's fine, it's good. But if you want to go uh, once more, try consider that uh, spending the same amount you could give to uh, some charity organization, and they can uh, uh, they can extend this uh, money to. Uh, people who uh, maybe not not uh, not uh, who don't have uh, enough uh, funds or money to buy their uh, food for iftar, uh, and so uh, uh, there should be no overeating, of course, no excess, and it is about the uh, practice of uh, moderation. And so, in all of this, there is an economic uh, economic dimension. Uh, in 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 this in in the fasting of uh, of Ramadan, um, <clears throat> and the health dimension, the last uh, uh, last dimension here about health dimension, is uh, that abstaining uh, from food and drink. Uh, it is similar to what the modern health experts, uh, when they claim, they talk about inter intermittent fasting. And uh, and they say that it leads to better cardiovascular health, uh, better digestive health, and uh, and also it has many other uh, other benefits for other medical conditions like for diabetes, for allergy, uh, like for even for myself, I uh, I'm allergic to many things, but uh, I do find it very uh, useful to control my allergies, and uh, and it is also good for emotional health as well. <clears throat> because we tend to increase uh, reading of the Quran and find uh, solace. Uh, and uh, in Surah Al-Ra'ad, uh, in Ayah 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمِئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمِئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ uh, Those who believe and uh, whose hearts uh, find comfort in the remembrance of Allah, surely uh, in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find <coughs> comfort. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, and in the Quran there is uh, there is shifa, uh, the, uh, shifa lima fi and uh, there is uh, uh, shifa or the uh, uh, 
uh, what is the uh, translation? Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala Muhammad. Uh, shifa lima fi sudur. It's, uh, this is uh, shifa for what is in the uh, in the hearts. Uh, and uh, one one idea that I find interesting in uh, uh, specifically from uh, also from uh, Christian tradition and just uh, just as a concept, uh, the concept of uh, via negativa uh, is that uh, in order to attain uh, health. Uh, uh, many times we don't really have to uh, get uh, like additional or uh, buy uh, some chemicals, uh, chemical uh, drugs, uh, and uh, because now allopathic uh, allopathic medicine really is uh, based on the uh, on uh, uh, on uh, like balancing the chemicals within your body, uh, but it's uh, uh, you don't have to add. Uh, 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 you don't have to add uh, drugs, uh, chem uh, chemical drugs, and uh, with uh, that uh, usually have uh, uh, side effects, and uh, you can you can attain health or at least uh, feel better if you uh, just remove something uh, something from uh, from your life, and uh, so uh, uh, like intermittent fasting, for example, if it is if you are out of Ramadan, if you're not, uh, you can. You can fast in other other months, and you can attain uh, kind of similar uh, health effects. Uh, and uh, this is in uh, in opposition to uh, our modern times when we have this idea that in order to solve a problem, uh, we need to bring something uh, something else. Uh, like uh, uh, like in in medicine, they would uh, give you. Uh, they would give you pills and uh, some uh, chemical, some tablets. Uh, or in uh, in in economic in economic development, uh, you know, you would want to uh, have uh, more uh, jobs created. Uh, you want to uh, create more uh, new uh, projects economic, for uh, for economic development. Uh, but sometimes uh, these are huge and and economic development projects are usually they are huge. And gigantic uh, projects, and many a time they uh, they uh, negatively affect uh, the environment, and they may even rob uh, uh, rob the next generation from uh, from benefiting uh, from the, uh, the natural resources. And so the idea of via negativa, I think it's a powerful uh, idea uh, that uh, in order to solve some problems, you may go for a simpler, uh, simpler approach, or simpler uh, solutions, uh, and so uh, this you can uh, you can look at it, and also you can see this kind of uh, ideas in the uh, in the book of Allah uh, that uh, we uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala says that you can find some uh, shifa by reading uh, by reading the uh, the book and find comfort that heart that the heart can find uh, comfort by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these are the uh, dimensions that I wanted to talk about. And uh, lastly, uh, if you remember from the very beginning, I told you to remember that uh, ayah uh, about the uh, uh, This uh, this uh, that ayah is uh, for the uh, also for this world and the next world, but if you read this uh, Surah Al Furqan uh, ayahs uh, uh, ayah number thirty, and actually you start five ayahs before that, uh, you will see uh, how in on the day of judgment uh, people will be gathered, and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he will complain to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and will say. وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنِّي قَوْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا uh, And on that day, on يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ, the messenger will say, O oh my sustainer, O oh, Ya Rabbi, uh, 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 some of my people, look, some of my people have come to regard this Qur'an as something uh, discarded. And uh, this, uh, this word, actually, مَهْجُور, uh, it is also... Uh, it is related, it is from the same root word of uh, Hajara, like uh, Hijra. Hijra is also from the same uh, root word. Uh, 
uh, and so uh, people just discard they 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 leave it uh, they they leave it even though it can be at the back of their minds and they they may want to come back to it sometime uh, but they actually leave it uh, and many would uh, some some would leave it uh, for good and so uh, Allah uh, the the Prophet وسلم, uh, did not complain uh, about people not following him uh, during this life. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm afraid that uh, you know I'm I'm really afraid that uh, uh, Allah uh, or the uh, Rasulullah will complain uh, about people, and I don't want to be also among those people who really uh, discarded the uh, the book of Allah. Uh, and so I don't want to be also uh, not myself, and also for you as well, for all my uh, colleagues and brothers and sisters, not to forget and not to be among those uh, who. And the Prophet ﷺ will complain to Allah that these people have uh, have uh, made this Quran mahjur, mahjura. And so, uh, just as a as a conclusion, uh, the overall of uh, the overall impact of uh, Ramadan, of course, if it is practiced correctly according to the uh, to the Sunnah, uh, uh, the uh, this uh, impact of uh, Ramadan on households is, of course, it is positive. Uh, on different dimensions, and as I said, it is on the dimension of uh, you know, spiritual dimension, economic and health dimension, and, uh, and it should bring joy and the feeling of togetherness and unity, and it should strengthen the community with the practice of uh, joint iftars. And I know that in many uh, many countries in the world, and uh, also uh, in in Malaysia, when we uh, when I was there, especially at the Islamic University. Uh, there was, an, uh, and I think it's still being practiced, the uh, joint iftar. And uh, so this is uh, this is a good a good thing uh, to practice, uh, even though there's nothing wrong to uh, to have iftars at home, even uh, do it alone. Uh, and uh, so uh, Ramadan really has positive impacts on spiritual, economic, and health levels. And reading the Quran with the aim of understanding and reflection really brings peace to hearts, and also it brings change to minds and actions to the uh, believers uh, when when we not only read the Quran uh, it's not only about recitation but also we try to uh, understand what we recite and uh, we try to practice uh, what we read uh, and uh, try to better ourselves we uh, improve our conduct improve our behavior uh, and we uh, inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward us in uh, both uh, worlds in in this world and in the in the hereafter, inshallah. And uh, with this, I would like to thank uh, all of you for uh, for your attention, for listening to me, and I hope uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala accepts uh, all our uh, siyam and qiyam and uh, and, uh, and reading and dua. And so make uh, try uh, 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 this more. I think for myself and a reminder for all of you as well uh, to be uh, to practice charity as much as uh, as you can, uh, because really Allah subhanahu wa taala al razak and we will not uh, Allah will not uh, uh, let uh, the uh, the charities go just uh, uh, just in in vain. So uh, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakallah khairan, dear Dr. Illus, for this very, very holistic and mindful uh, presentation, allowing all of us to get a lot of insights on how we can bring balance into our hearts, into our lives, specifically during the holy month of Ramadan, but also generally beyond the holy month of Ramadan as well. Please, dear brothers and sisters and excellent participants, round of applause to our dear Ustad. And it just made me realize and think about how the Sahaba used to long for Ramadan by awaiting it six months in advance. And then after Ramadan, they used to continue to bring the insights of the Ramadan after six months. So the whole aspect of Ramadan was with them on a daily basis every month, preparing six months in advance and internalizing the insights six months afterwards, subhanAllah. So Jazakallah Khairan for this excellent presentation. And uh, Alhamdulillah, I thought I know you well, Dr. Ilus. I didn't know that you're a revert to Islam, mashallah. Uh, so that's beautiful to 
to get more insights. And as I, as you say, sometimes when people revert to Islam, the surroundings think that this is just a, a you know, small thing that will disappear after a while. But this is something that we have chose mindfully as a way to come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So thank you so much for sharing from your, from your own uh, personal uh, life story and experience as well. So dear brothers and sisters, as we're such a uh, close uh, knitted community. If you have any questions, feel free to use the Zoom chat function or even unmute yourself today. Uh, usually we do have uh, so many people participating, so we tend to not use the on uh, the microphone feature, but today we're small and close uh, sohbah. And uh, so feel free to unmute yourself as well. Any questions from your side, your brothers and sisters, feel free to share them to Dr. Eldus. Yes, Sister Fatima, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear uh, Dr. Ildiz. Barakallahu fikum for these beautiful reminders, Allahu Akbar. And because it is about balance, um, I wanted to just share, uh, you know, some things that, you know, might come up in homes, uh, just as examples, when people have kind of differing preferences you know, there's so many uh, ways, as you said, to kind of engage with Ramadan. But then when you're in a family and uh, there's different preferences. So some some people are very, very, very introverted and do not want to go at all. And that impacts the rest of the family who may want to like be interacting with community. And so if you just have some like, you know, general nasiha about how to kind of, you know, create that balance, because it's not actually creating um joy but it's creating some conflicts in terms of how people you know are engaging with the month uh, uh alhamdulillah thank you uh, thank you very much uh, sister Fatima. Uh, uh well uh yes people uh, uh have really different uh, different personal personalities and uh, some are more reserved uh, some introverts and some some are ex extroverts and uh, and all uh, all shapes and kinds uh, in in between. Uh, and uh, on the one hand, it could it could create some uh, misunderstanding. But then, family is uh, is a place where uh, we are supposed to be uh, uh, you know practicing uh, tolerance, uh, not only tolerance but uh, love and mercy. Uh, and uh, this is where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has uh, created and made uh, this mawadda wa rahma. Uh, and family is about mawadda wa rahma, and it's a, it is love and and mercy, and so uh, you know as a maybe as a as a husband or as a as a child, uh, uh, you, you don't uh, uh, if you uh, demand something uh, maybe from your family members uh, during during Ramadan. Oh, I don't like this kind of food, or I don't like that that kind of. I demand uh, so, uh, something else. Uh, this is not the practice of uh, of mawadda wa rahma. It is uh, asserting yourself. Uh, so it, it is better to uh, kind of uh, stay uh, 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 calm and uh, you know try not to to discipline yourself. Uh, as, as I said, Ramadan is about uh, self control and, and discipline. And uh, in in families, uh, it is possible to uh, to practice that uh, uh, so that we don't react. Uh, uh, we uh, quite often we uh, we tend to react, uh, uh, you know, to uh, to whatever other per other people say, uh, whether it is in the family or, or outside in, in the states or something. Uh, but uh, this Ramadan, this uh, uh, they got the, this consciousness, this awareness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, constant awareness. Uh, it should uh, help us realize that. Uh, you know we are not um, we, we are not the uh, uh, somehow the uh, the word comes in uh, some uh, some uh, uh, something comes in my own language <clears throat> which uh, means that um, uh, you are not a king you are not uh, uh, anything uh, you know higher than than other people uh, so uh, you know, try to be more uh, grounded and, and reserved. And if it is uh, uh, like a person, uh, I'm also kind of uh, introverted. I uh, I don't like big uh, uh, like big crowds. Uh, so uh, alhamdulillah, just uh, being uh, uh, thankful to Allah for whatever uh, we have, 
and also uh, not comparing ourselves with people who are better off and also compare ourselves with people who are worse off and uh, and try to help them try to uh, try to imagine because every time even even if you think you are uh, you are uh, you don't have enough you don't have much uh, there will certainly will be people who uh, who have even less than you uh, uh, and so it is it really helps to uh, maybe compare yourself with uh, these kind of people and uh, and try to uh, help uh, really help uh, those if you can uh, by uh, by extending charities and so on Zakala for uh, excellent answer and Nasiha, Dr. Illus. Thank you, Sister Fatima, for excellent question as well. Any other questions, brothers and sisters? So AZ is writing, in Ramadan, usually we tend to sleep less than we usually have. Will it affect our health? How to balance it? That's a good question, actually. What do you think, Dr. Illus? Uh well, uh depending on your situation, uh you know, I I can understand if you are uh, if you are working uh, working full time, and uh, if it is really difficult, uh, then uh, you should concentrate on on really on your health. Uh, you know, if if qiyam is difficult, uh, then uh, you can do something else, something additional, like uh, you can do uh, charities, or you can uh, maybe uh, pray buha, for example. Uh, so, uh, but. Take care of your sleep patterns. I mean, if you if you have to wake up in the morning and then uh, and work the whole day, uh, and you do not have any opportunity to uh, to have at least maybe a, an hour to sleep during the day, uh, then uh, I think you should really uh, balance it out and uh, take care of your health by uh, by sleeping at night if you can, uh, uh, because really uh, you want to uh, not only uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you want to do it in a uh, in a manner that it uh, that it uh, doesn't affect your uh, doesn't affect negatively your health, uh, your uh, your psychology, your uh, your emotions uh, in in a negative manner. So you you have to really uh, it depends on your own situation, and you know uh, what you can do uh, and what is your own situation, whether you can uh, really. Uh, whether you can afford staying in Qiyam at night and read uh, read more, maybe you should read uh, more during uh, uh, the Quran uh, in in the morning. Uh, but you can try and find uh, find some balance uh, if you cannot do one uh, one final like uh, one kind of uh, uh, worship. You can do some uh, something else. Uh, so you can find a balance even even in these situations. But of course, we uh, we should not forget people who are uh, working in difficult uh, difficult jobs, uh, menial jobs, uh, and for, for whom uh, the fasting may be very uh, very difficult. I mean, if they are in um, uh, you know, like they are working in <clears throat> in the sun, they are at, at, a, at a construction site, and if uh, they uh, just physically, if you cannot uh, fast because of uh, the hard work. Uh, I think you you can consider uh, either uh, fasting at maybe at some other time, or maybe uh, you can use a dia or pay uh, or pay out of for what you can. Uh, so still uh, there are there are uh, there are things that you can do really uh, in order to balance. Uh, but uh, each and every person's situation uh, is different. We we are all in different situations. We do different kind of jobs. Uh, maybe for me, it's easy. I can uh, I'm working from home, and it is easy to uh, uh, like teaching uh, online. Uh, but I cannot compare myself with the person uh, who is uh, just next, uh, just uh, a few hundred meters away. There's a con construction site, and people are really. Uh, it's a hard job. Uh, I know that because I. I used to work as a, at a construction site also when I just uh, many many years ago. So I know how hard it can be. Uh, so we can find balance, but uh, uh, it really depends on your own uh, situation. Azakallah like khairan for your guidance and nasiha, Dr. Indus. And I do echo it. I mean, of course, we all have our intentions to do as much ibadah as possible during Ramadan, but then. 
reality strikes also. I mean, we are not all living in Muslim countries. We need to also have that in mind. If your country is a Muslim country where the whole society is based upon Islamic principles, Islamic values, and also Islamic uh, months and uh, practices and uh, you know uh, tradition, then by all means, the whole society will be in the phase of Ramadan. So it's easier, actually. Uh, probably people will not work as much. If you're working for an organization like Dr. Illus, where he's working online and he works for Islamic academies and institutes, then by all means it's easier. But if you're, for instance, working in a non-Muslim company or on, you know, or organization or entity, then that is something that you need to have in mind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything that we're doing. They know that your situation might be different than let's say mine or Dr. Illus or whatever, right? So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take that into account, I'm sure, you know. And we all have different, you know, struggles when it comes to coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by you just fasting and still working and having a good akhlaq in your workplace is also an ibadah in itself. That's also sadaqah in itself, right? So I think uh, the question is very relevant because sometimes we need to, we tend to spiritually bypass ourselves. I'm not as good as this other person who is constantly in ihtikaf or you know, is constantly doing qiyam or is going to the tarawih prayer at the masjid every day. Of course, this is something that is a benefit and something that is recommended. But then we all have different life situations and balances to have one objective measurement, which is to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and also do things in jama'at and in congregation. But then you need to have individual measurements as well, which is... Uh, your disposition, your context, which might be different than my context or Dr. Illus or anybody else. And that is something that we need to reflect upon psychologically as well, because we're not the same. We don't have the same context. And if we try to fulfill our goals, comparing ourselves with others, then we might get burned out. There is something called spiritual burnout, which is quite close to psychological burnout, right? And I have seen that in the in the month of Ramadan, people who after Ramadan they get burned out, and they you know they they need to go on sick leave, and that's not that's not uh, uh, that's not a good intention, uh, because if you put yourself in that situation, then something has not been in balance, right? And Islam is the deen of mizan, the deen of balance, right? So this is really something that we as you know, practitioners of Islamic psychology, students of Islamic psychology, scholars of Islamic psychology try to ponder about how to apply IP into our own life circumstances and bring balance between the heart and the soul and, and your aql and your, uh, you know, emotions and your nafs. Then you need to reflect, what is, is that a nafsani thing that I'm doing now by comparing myself with others when it comes to their ibadat and their, you know, worship? Or do I need to also tailor it according to my circumstances, you know? If you're a single mother with four children, you need to bring the children to school. That's quite different than if you are, you know, let's say a young 25-year-old man who is not married yet, you know, uh, and is uh, a student but uh, has uh, breaks during Ramadan. So we need to understand the context we live in, the situation we are in, and then, of course, we have common routines that we all do. You know, we all do Siam from... Uh, from you know from uh, Fajr to Maghrib uh, we all uh, try as much as possible to engage in the Salat al we give Sadaqah you know we give Sakat you know uh, we do Tilawat and we read the Quran and, and these are things that you can do throughout the day as well you know so uh, I think uh, your reflections were really good Dr. Ildus and I just wanted to add uh, some aspects perhaps from a psychological lens as well Allahu Alam so there are a couple of other reflections here. Sister Fatima has shared some reflections. Yeah, any other questions or reflections, brothers and sisters? Before we end, I'm mindful of the time. I think that Dr. Ildus, soon as iftar time for you, you're in Turkey. You're one hour, two hours ahead of us. So mindful uh, of your... Yes, uh, another one and a half hours, I think. Oh, okay. oh, I still have time, no problem. Any questions, reflections, uh, brothers and sisters, feel free to share. Either in the Zoom or you can also raise your digital hand and we will unmute you, inshallah. All right. Yes, we will send a recording this through email to all those who registered. Uh, if you haven't registered, then register by all means. And we're so sorry. There's something wrong with 
the email function when you send mass emails. So I know a lot of people are not receiving our emails right now. We will figure it out. So. And we will share it in all of our uh, social media and WhatsApp groups as well. Without any further ado, thank you so much, Dr. Ildis, for being with us today. It was such an honor to listen to your lecture and presentation. And we're hosting you soon again as we start our yes. IPRN lecture series. We will host you and also Professor Auda and, and other uh, esteemed scholars uh, in the IPRN project. So we will see each other soon, inshallah. May Allah inshallah. accept you from uh, Siam and hope you have a good uh, if thought and enjoy the rest of the evening and we'll see each other soon if we don't see each other before ramadan mm -hmm. ramadan mubarak to you and eid mubarak to you i should say and your family inshallah yeah, 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 thank you so much dr. Ildus. round thank of applause to our you. beloved thank ustad dr ildus and we're very honest thank, host you. Him. thank you so much <clears throat> thank you so much thank you and to all brothers and sisters Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for all of your excellent questions. Even though there's so many activities during the holy month of Ramadan, you're still there with us. Thank you so much. We will meet each other again the second Sunday of the month where we will start and continue our international lecture series as usual. More information will be shared in all of our platforms.